Hey guys, my name's Sam and welcome to PrepMedic. In this week's video, we're doing an in-depth review and walkthrough of the MyMedic MyFac Large. So I've actually had a lot of requests to review MyMedic products, mainly because they are becoming very, very popular. Uh, this company has kind of gone on a marketing spree. They build a product that's really not something that we've really seen uh, in this space before. You know, we see a lot of military marketing, we see a lot of law enforcement marketing, but when it comes to the civilian, to the individual person, we don't see a lot of really high-end kits getting put together. And MyMedic kind of jumped into that uh, space, if you would. So they have a number of products, and you know I've resisted this for a long time because I wasn't sure. Uh, you know, there's some things in here I question, but ultimately, uh, this is a pretty cool kit. I'm gonna go through it piece by piece. I'm gonna talk about some of the things that I will change in it, uh, especially because this is actually something I'm going to use, um, but I'm not gonna keep all the supplies, and this is quite the hefty kit. So obviously, if this is too big for you, they do make a MyFac, the normal one. It's kind of a normal size of what I'd say a Condor pouch would be that you can put on a plate carrier or something like that. It, needless to say, this is not going on a plate carrier. This thing is absolutely massive. Um, but where the MyFac Large kind of comes into play is more so in like a car kit or a home kit. Uh, me personally, I will be putting this on that uh, uh, Molly panel I have on the back of uh, my car or in the back of my uh, passenger seat. Uh, and this will just become kind of my dedicated car first aid kit because this has things in it that I just don't carry in the tactical kits and stuff that I put together for my work. So some more minor items. Uh, on the outside of this bag, we have a, a loop panel on the front that will accept Molly attachments if you want to put something else on here, an external tourniquet ho holder, something like that, I'm foreshadowing a little bit there. Um, and then obviously you can put patches wherever you want. This is just a MyMedic patch that came with it. Uh, what's really cool about this is this is actually all a tearaway design. So I can take that strap off and it will unvelcro from this back portion that has Molly attachment points. This is what will go in the car and then I can take this out um, and actually like bring it to the patient. If you're doing that, it has a strap where you can wear this as like a uh, over-the-shoulder uh, bag, or if you want to be really cool, you can wear it as a fanny pack around your waist. Uh, just so if you have to go a distance to get to somebody, um, you can use it as such, and then that is pretty adjustable there. So, uh, coming to the top, you have this pretty heavy-duty pull handle. Honestly, the quality of this pack is great. Um, I have nothing bad to say about it. Uh, it's not showing wear and tear. The Molly loops seem to be uniform size, which is kind of a problem you get when you get into some cheaper tactical gear. Opening the top, it has this one loop, which honestly, I think this is kind of unnecessary. It's just one more thing to get at to open the zippers. And then you have zipper pulls with little X's on them. Nothing really to say there. Um, so the kit, as we open it up like this and fold it down, we have so much um, in this first aid kit. And we're gonna go through it piece by piece so you have a good idea of what is in this. Now, uh, right up front, um, they've organized it actually pretty well because you have your major bleeding supplies right here. Now, you're gonna notice one thing um, right here, and I think this is the biggest reason why I resisted my medic for as long as I did. Uh, this is a rat's tourniquet that's in all their kits. I think they used to have the ability to switch these out with a different tourniquet, pick what's in your kit. I can't find that on their website anymore. So uh, this, honestly, I'm gonna throw it out and we're just going to fix it by putting in a cat tourniquet. Fits in the same place um, and it's actually like a viable option as a tourniquet. Honestly, I would keep tourniquets on the outside of the kit if you can, just because it's easier to access. That's something that's a need it now item as opposed to something that I wanna dig for. So you can fix that by throwing in a cat tourniquet. Now at the top of this kit, we have a couple different things. And this thing has pockets everywhere to the point where it can actually get hard to find certain pieces of equipment. So right here, I've got 
an ice pack. Um, like I said, this is stuff that I'm not going to keep in a tactical kit, but when you have, you know, a kid or somebody bumps their head or they're, you know, have a bee sting and you want to just control the swelling and the pain a little bit, ice pack's a great thing to have. Um, and this is really easy to do. Obviously, these things go bad over time, so you have to make sure that these aren't hitting their expiration dates. Okay, so coming into the pocket right next to that, oh, drop that out, we've got quick clot for wound packing, which is a great thing to have. I'll probably replace this with the LE version. Um, it's vacuum packed, you get a little bit more in the roll. Uh, I, that's what I prefer using for uh, uh, wound packing, but this will work great for you um, in most cases. We have a chest seal. So this is their own branded chest seal. Um, it's got the one-way valves on it, which are fine. There have been some studies that have found that with this one-way valve, they get clogged if it's severe blood loss. So if you have a hemonumo, um, these can become clogged. Not a huge deal. You just monitor them for attention pneumothorax and you can burp the seal if they start showing signs of that. Um, so they do have the chest seal in here and this only has one uh, seal in it. So you have an entrance or exit wound. That is something you might have to address uh, by other means. And then right here, you have just kind of a miscellaneous pouch of a bunch of gauze pads. So most of our bleeding isn't life-threatening arterial bleeding. A lot of this is going to be your more minor wounds, uh, you know, a head wound, you know, somebody scrapes their arm, their leg. So really, when you're looking at a civilian kit, this is something that's really important to have. It's just a bunch of gauze pads uh, that you can put on there, and then it's got some Krillix wrap uh, on it, which will allow you to kind of address that bleeding in an efficient way. All right, so coming down in the main pocket, on this side we have uh, just some glucose, uh, some glucose gel here. A uh, diabetic patient, they start to go low. You know, they're not unresponsive. They can still protect their airway. You can take this, and you can have them eat it. Generally speaking, you want to get it in the buccal route, so put it between the cheek and the gum. Uh, put that there, bring their sugar up. Obviously, they need more complex carbs to keep that up for a long period of time. But this is something that can keep them going until you can get, like, a peanut butter and jelly sandwich or some orange juice or something like that. Next to that, we have a pressure bandage. So once again, this is their own branded pressure bandage. This is not, you know, a North American Rescue thing. This is their own thing. So really all it is is it's a vacuum sealed package um, of a wrap that has some gauze pads on it. It's just meant to apply pressure to wounds. There's really nothing super special about it, but it'll work just fine. And then it comes in their own packaging. Uh, what's kind of neat about them doing kind of their own things in this is that it keeps their costs relatively low. Um, so they can kind of control the manufacturing process of this. Next to that, we have a lot of paracord and a whistle and a chem light. It's a glow stick, but chem light makes it sound cooler. Um, that's great for marking areas if you need to mark a trailhead or if you need to, you know, mark a casualty to get back to. Uh, you can use that. Lots of uses for it or just flagging down a helicopter or searchers, something like that. Very useful to have a uh, chem light of some kind in there. Now, as we come down to this next pocket, once again, one of these hidden pockets kind of behind everything, we have uh, basically a burn uh, packet here. Now, I don't know a whole lot. This is uh, hydrogel. I'll tell you our protocols uh, on the helicopter and on the ambulance for burns is we rinse it, we cool it, we get it down to where the burning process is no longer happening, and we wrap it with a dry sterile dressing. You get a lot of like other stuff on it. It just makes one more step for the burn center when they finally get there. So minor burns, absolutely. Gels are fine. Um, you have some small ones, and then you have larger hydrogel burn dressings there. Um, just use caution and make sure you've done your research before you're putting this kind of thing on uh, a patient or a very severe burn. Remember, the biggest thing with burn management is you want to keep the patient warm because they're super susceptible to hypothermia in that burn stage state. They don't have the ability to vasoconstrict or anything like that. Um, so that's your mainstay of treatment. This is something that can help you. Now, there is another hidden pocket right by there, and I'm going to get this tourniquet out of the way so I can actually get to it. Um, and this, like we were just talking about hypothermia, these are three survival blankets. So these are space blankets, they're their brand. Um, and what these are basically meant to do is reflect heat in, keep cold out. Um, the best thing you can do with a trauma patient is keep them warm. Hypothermia kills in trauma, even if it's 95 degrees outside. They lose the ability to regulate their temperature. They become what's called poikilothermic, which means they take on the temperature of the environment. 
Even if it's 95 degrees outside, we all think that's super hot, but that is actually the temperature where platelet dysfunction starts to happen, and they will start bleeding a lot more. So keeping them warm is a hugely life-saving intervention. Just know that this on its own isn't enough to keep them warm. Bundle them up in whatever jackets, coats, blankets they have, and then use this as the outer protective layer, and you'll be in a much better space for that patient. So right below that, we have the place where the tourniquet sits, and then we just have two things of cling or acrylics. Um, this is great, this holds things in place. We use this for IVs. Uh, some wound care specialists will tell you that these aren't super great to use, um, just because if they're on for a long period of time, you can cause ulcers and some other issues. That being said, for short-term use, you've all had these put on you if you've ever donated plasma or blood. It's great because it sticks to itself. It's really easy to use. It's also great for things like splinting fingers together. Um, if you want to put this, it sticks to itself. It keeps things really neat and tidy. Uh, there is one thing I got a note in here that basically says because of COVID, they didn't have the supply of a certain item, so finger splints. So that is not included in this kit, but they give you a $10 gift card with it. So it allows you to buy that when it does come back in stock for them, which is kind of a neat idea. So that is just the top pocket of this IFAC. Now going on to what I would call the lid of the IFAC, here we have even more things. So in this one, we have these two fold-out wings, and both of these are actually removable. So if you decide you don't want these in here, you want a simpler pack, you want to kind of rearrange it, it's great. You can take these out, or if you want to throw these to somebody, you can do that. Now, starting in the main part of the pack, we've got a couple different things. Uh, at the top, we just have two elastic bandages, and those are in here to secure your splint. So you guys know I like SAM splints. Um, this is the exact same thing. It's just a Mimetic branded splint. Um, it should be radiolucent. You can use this for legs, for arms. This is kind of my go-to when it comes to pre-hospital splinting. You know, on the ambulance, we've got like vacuum splints, which are great, but they're not portable. This is the best portable splint on the market, if you ask me. Uh, and that just sits right in here for use. Then you have a uh, thing of tape, just tape super useful. You can use it to secure the splint if you want. You can use it to tape fingers together. You can use it to fi fix pieces of equipment. Great thing to have, highly recommend it. And then next to that, you have some trauma shears. These will be fine. These are cheap, like one, $2 trauma shears, which is what 99% of EMTs and paramedics are using. Just be aware that when you use this once, it will be too dull to use again, really. So I replace all my trauma shears with X shears. That's kind of my go-to when it comes to that. But if you're only gonna be using it once, you're probably gonna be using it a little less than I am, uh, these will work just fine for you and there's nothing wrong with them. Down here, we have a thing of uh, eye rinse. So it's just a uh, sterile water solution if you need to rinse out eyes or a uh, wound of some kind. Down here, we have a thing of electrolytes. Oops. We have a thing of electrolytes. Um, you know, you're hiking or you're in the middle of nowhere. You need to replenish electrolytes along with hydration for uh, somebody to continue to function. So for any survival kit or something where you might be a ways away from help, definitely a good thing to have. And I almost blew past it on this top pocket underneath the splint. Like I said, more hidden pockets. We do have an NPA. Generally, I'd like to see this a little bit more easily accessible because this is part of our initial march algorithm, our airway, where we might need to throw this in in a hurry. But as long as you know where it is and you train with it, you're good to go. And then we have two CPR shields in there. Um, that's just a barrier device to keep you from going mouth to mouth, which is not a great thing to do. Now, uh, the last thing in kind of this lid, not counting these two flaps here, we've got a triangular bandage for a sling for the splint. Can be used as a bandana, can be used as a pressure dressing. Like these are one of those things that I'd say always keep on you. Um, it's great to have these prepackaged ones because they're so small. You can make these yourself out of sheets and cut them into triangles. That's what we used to do on Ski Patrol, but I really like the prepackaged ones because they're right there, really easy to do. Now, last but not least on this section, we've got kind of just a miscellaneous tools. Uh, we've got a thermometer, great. Pen light to check pupillary responses. You can look into ears, noses, things like that. Uh, and then we have like kind of what I'd call a minor like surgical kit. You've got a couple hemostats, you know, pull out uh, splinters, you know, <laughs> that kind of thing. Um, I use it a lot to like uh, cut the pressure on a blood pressure cuff. 
you can use that as a makeshift tourniquet or you can you know, use that as a pressure bag on a bag of saline in the professional world. It also has uh, two different sizes of tweezers in here and some bandage scissors depending on what you need. Um, you also have a, a tongue depressor uh, and it's just a good little packet to have all in one place uh, for your more minor items. Now, coming into these two wings. Now, these have a bunch of stuff in them. I will uh, try to list out exactly what's in each of these packets on the side of this video. Uh, on this right side here, this is like the medication pocket of this kit. So in here, we've got a bunch of different meds in these plastic bags. And each of these kind of has a different like set of medications. So we'll start with this guy here. So this one here, we've got uh, Dyphen, which is diphenhydramine. Um, that's just for your minor allergic reactions. And then we have ibuprofen, which is a non-steroidal anti-inflammatory, good for your pain, things like that. Um, and this guy here, this is like your uh, antiseptic heaven. This has um, all kinds of antiseptic towelettes. Um, it's got... Uh, all sorts of different uh, nice things to clean wounds, to sterilize a site before a procedure, um, wipe down like areas of exposure. Great thing to have. And this guy here, we've got some Dramamine for motion sickness uh, and some aspirin. Uh, aspirin, I wouldn't take it for really anything except new onset chest pain. Uh, you know, it does increase the risk of bleeding slightly. So in a traumatic issue, like I just, I stay away from it. I'll usually use ibuprofen which will increase your likelihood of bleeding a little bit too, uh, and Tylenol. Um, but your aspirin is great. If somebody's complaining of chest pain, you can give that to them, and it's a good first treatment. Uh, the dosage for new onset chest pain is generally 324 milligrams, um, so that's four baby aspirin. Uh, and then last but not least, we've got things like lip balm, sunscreen, bug spray, um, more uh, antibiotic, triple antibiotic ointment, hydrocortisone cream, anti-itch, oral pain reliever, all of that in this guy here. So really for like medications, for the things you might need pre-hospital, like these are pretty good. Um, this is what I'd probably keep on me and probably a little bit more. So you've got a little bit of anything you will need to tell you the truth. Now, last but not least in this pocket here, we've got some gloves, so personal protective equipment, big bag, and in each set of gloves has a small bag inside of that, uh, which is fine and great. Uh, just make sure that's accessible because it's one of the first things you're gonna do. So this does, the organization kind of has you going like here, then here, then here um, for a really severe patient. Nine times out of 10 though, this is gonna be just fine. Now, the rest of this pocket is filled with these bandage packs, which are great. Um, so one thing my medic is doing now is they're making these individual packs. Uh, and these packs basically have a set number of things in them uh, that are meant to allow you to restock them. So if you use one of these, you know exactly what's going to be in it. So right here, we've got the bandage pack. So this is like, um, you've got like one by three bandages, two by four bandages. Yes, I'm reading off the back. You've got fingertip bandages, knuckle bandages, knee and elbow bandages for your scrapes, cuts, minor things. And then one of the really cool things they're coming with is you've got a couple micromend kits. So these guys here are basically an alternative to Steri strips. You put this on either side of the wound, pull it tight, it pulls it together. It's kind of an alternative for stitches. Uh, granted, this is a temporizing thing. You should, you can do this, put some antibiotics in there, do this, get out, get to a hospital, and then they can evaluate if this is gonna be uh, what this patient needs or if they need actual stitches. But it's just kind of a cool concept. I haven't actually gotten the chance to test it out myself yet. And then absolutely last, um, you've got some mole skin in here and uh, just some um, steri strips, essentially, some securing strips if you do want to go more of the traditional route. You know, all in all, this thing has a ton of supplies in it. Uh, because they're controlling a lot of their manufacturing costs, it's something that really cuts down on the cost of this kit. Like, obviously, this is still a little bit expensive. You've got a lot of stuff going into it. Um, but they do offer everything from a really small kit up to the large kits. My main complaints with it are basically the tourniquet, um, but I think it's really cool that they're kind of marketing something more towards the civilian world instead of this constant push for tactical medicine and all of that stuff, um, which is great and necessary and we need it, but there's a lot more minor issues that we see than these severe 
uh, life-threatening bleeds. So I do have an affiliate link with these guys. Use them or don't. Um, it does uh, push a little bit of revenue towards this channel. Uh, and then I have a discount code completely separate from that. that PrepMedic20 will get you 20% off anything on their site. So if you have any questions about this or anything else you wanna see me review from MyMedic, let me know in the comments down below and I will see you next week.